click the links, join the channel here over at subscribe. So I got a mailbox. You want to mail me some comics or whatever. So breastless blue haired cat girls not selling uh, Star Wars Ahsoka. Shocking. Who saw that coming? I don't know if you can see this girl. Turn off Nurkish playing in the background. Nurkish live stream. Um, so she's got purple hair. Yay, that's so topical. What are the associations? What associations do you have with a, a breastless uh, breastless Asian woman, maybe? Purple hair with a, a problematic, pissed-off look on her face about to lecture you on, on the patriarchy or some other thing you could just give two shits about. It, the association's not good, friend. I just wanted to watch Star Wars. And you look at this, you're like, what the f, f, f is this? Well, it's not Star Wars, friendo. It's something else. It's it's Star Wars for feminists. It's like, well, feminists don't really watch Star Wars. Yeah, you got it in one, bucko. So who's watching it? I just told you, nobody's watching it. You're marketed to a market that doesn't exist. Oh, we'll, we'll get them on board. Didn't you go for like eight episodes or something? Did you get them on board? No, actually, we did not get them on board. We didn't actually get anyone. Who's your Who's the Star Wars audience? Is it mostly probably white dudes, thirty to fifties, maybe? You know, Gen X and Gen um, whatever around that gen is, below that gen is. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So you're giving them like what they would rate as the least things they're interested in. Oh well, they're all istophobic. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure they are. I'm sure they are. Proudly, proudly raise your hand. Oh, don't raise your hand like that, bucko. But um. But uh, they're not watching the show. Yeah, yeah, nobody is. E e oh, oh, did we screw up? Yeah, I think you guys did screw up. So here's the, here's the thing: people were excited for Ahsoka because they were a bit naive. I mean, by now you gotta look at. I mean, the short version is whatever Disney puts out is gonna be this sort of stupid vagina power woke stuff. It's the um, it's all the most unattractive people as possible. Sexless is a good description. They start with these breastless B-cup brigade and they dress them in overalls to remove any sex appeal and male gaze whatsoever. I remember once um, on the couch, I had my head at my girlfriend's lap and uh, some chick was on TV and I said something about like chicks wearing overalls. It's like they're, they're fat and they're on their period or something. And she hits my head and I look up like, oh, you're wearing overalls the whole time. I didn't notice. <laughs> Oh, what an idiot I was. Anyway, so they're just um they're just kind of like store mannequins to hang clothes on. They're as removed from the story as much as possible. They're just kind of placeholders to carry the story, which actually sounds like oh that, that kind of makes sense, except that there isn't one and that is not how humans work. We need sex appeal. Women have to be women and sex No, no, no. Overalls look look fine on you and you're not that fat. Uh w women have to be women and sexually available on screen. So the show is a bunch of uh 30 to 45-year-old women. I don't know how old this rosy whatever face is nowadays running around she was good in Clerks, too. It's about all I remember her from. Running around doing guy stuff, except, of course, they're not guys. And women are incredibly boring doing this kind of stuff. And no, it's not sexy to say the obvious. This is not what chicks are good for. They're not the leaders in these kind of shows. That's all stupid. And a lot of other hot words I wish I could say. So why are the parasites at Disney, and they are, pushing this on us? Why not just give the customers what they want? Well, because the customers are sexists and probably a phobics and yeah 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 okay but apparently there are a lot of us so why not put these uh, these ladies in some sexy short skirts and have them be cute and funny what they're doing with star wars clearly isn't working because it's not star wars it's disney globalist propaganda to replace the men with women and to destroy order and structure the problem is there is no such multifaceted propaganda that people just accept it. Instead of stopping and saying, hey, this is stupid. I want to see chicks in chick roles and men in men roles. The goal of women in most storytelling is to have babies. They are the sexy sex objects that men desired. So they get rescued and, you know, guys, uh, guys uh, stuff them and, and they start a family. And that's, you know, they rescue the girl from the dragon. They go off, they have their adventure and... That's the next generation that started. That's like this standard storytelling 101. It doesn't matter if it's a space opera or what. Storytelling is inherently tribal nationalism. Guy rescues the vagina. They have their adventures, but the prize is the girl as the center of the new-to-be-formed family. Everything Disney does doesn't... And then they go, oh, well, we're going to tell a different type of story. A story about 35 to 45-year-old women. You're like, yeah, nobody wants to see that. Uh, 
oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the cold hard objective reality. It's like nobody wants to see that. If you want to tell some kind of lifetime story about something, that would work, but not not some action adventure story where you really need um, men in the main roles and then much much younger women who are. They still have that spark of fertility. That's why they're being rescued. And there's that 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 subconscious story going on. It's like, oh, but but we're just this is something different. Yeah, yeah. But all the stuff you say is different. It's just not finding an audience. Everything Disney does does not make sense because it's not organic storytelling. It's the anti-life equation to destroy families. They want to tell girls that they don't need no man. They need to be independent and go off on dangerous adventures and risk their fertility, which is nonsense. It's why stories fail. Men are expendable, biologically speaking. Young women are not. And here, these women are not young. They're way past their peak, and they already have kids. It's In one of the episodes, like someone else is raising this chick's kid. It's like, you look at that, and she's off on these really high-risk adventures, and I don't know, some robots are raising her kids, or she's in, the kid's in some kind of like socialist upbringing and it's like oh this is just commie crap and like you hate the woman you hate everyone involved with this like this is just commie propaganda it's like yeah that's exactly what it is so why are we watching these 35 to 45 year old titless women they're way too old to be sexually appealing the stories their stories should focus on families and not adventures because it's so effing ridiculous to see oh no, no, no scarlett johansson you know 140 pounds and back in those days it was mostly in her tits could could run around kicking people's you know kicking these guys butts left and right it's like this is just that's a very very you can have her do it to like one guy she that she sneaks up on just one but you just it's just too ridiculous it's like it maybe it works in comic books but it just doesn't work on the big screen and that this is the equivalent no you understand this this um short haired chick is on the equivalent of a space motorcycle doing like cool space motorcycle stuff and she's giving people the thumbs up and she's nodding and winking and doing this like that's all like cool guy stuff and it's like even that that's too much for you can do like one thing like one little nod when you pull off some cool trick you can't do this through it's and it chicks can't do it at all it's just not it's just not what it, yes there are occasional chicks who are doing that kind of stuff in real life but you know what i'm saying it's like it's not selling on the big screen i'm just saying what's literally not selling anyway um so this is like the seventh failing Disney streaming show that failed because it was too woke, and yet Disney keeps making this woke cancer. They're riding on the name brand recognition of Star Wars, but the show keeps tanking. They start fine, and then they collapse when people realize it's all vagina stuff with 125-pound women doing stuff that probably hurts their uterus. Nobody on earth wants to see some 40-year-old chick wearing a potato sack burka. For the love of God, at least put her in something revealing. Otherwise, what is the uh, character bringing to the table? A 35-year-old woman is bringing recipes to the table, not adventure. Most people are firmly patriarchal and tribal, so Disney is presenting the opposite of reality because they're trying to change the perception of gender roles. But people are really tired of all that nonsense, and the pendulum is swinging back. I would take all the executives associated with the Disney streaming platform, have them watch the original trilogy, and say, uh, do that, uh, like a... Do, do what the original trilogy did. Like, create that same feeling where you have a group of uh, mostly fair-skinned people of the light go on an adventure, and it's male-led. The patriarchy is a good thing. Tribalism is a good thing. The whole Disney bullshit found family Frankfurt School Alinsky concept is over. It'd just be so easy for Disney to just do one anti-woke show that goes in the other direction. The problem for Disney is, is that if they did something like that, like the original 77, they got that same vibe going on. If they got a few uh, blonde, good-looking leads to go on some adventure, it would be a massive success. And they can't have a white show that kicks the shit out of everything else, which it absolutely freaking would. People are tired of the racial grievance, anti-white messaging in all their shows. Gee, look, another diverse cast full of vibrant cultural enrichment from people all over the world, mostly Africa and Asia, and not Europe, because when they are in the shows, they're the antagonists, which is like every single time. This is just the Rose Ticoing of Star Wars. If you don't like it, you're obviously anti-Asian. Okay, but it's it's more that people are pro their tribe, not so much anti the other tribe. The anti, it's just, just they just why, people are interested in seeing themselves on screen, or at least their tribe on screen. They're sick of diversity. It's okay to just admit how lame and boring diversity is. We're, we we know we don't need the little adorable black girl to come in here and be super smart. That's called the Mary Sue Purse puppy. We've seen it a thousand times. Oh, so what you're saying is, yeah, I just said what I said. You heard me. You clearly heard what I'm saying. I just told you what we don't want to see. 
and you're going to keep making movies with the adorable little uh, Shuri type of character who's so much smarter than all the other scientists. That's pandering, and that's... I mean, frankly, it's embarrassing to do that. It's like it embarrasses everyone in the room when you do that kind of stuff, and they keep doing that all, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, people just don't watch their stuff. We're not all globalists. Most of us are nationalists. We think this stuff is cringe. Nobody cares about girl power. It kills me that Disney has this... Um, the thing is, even, I think even feminists are dipping out of this, like... I, you don't hear the whole feminist vibe that you heard like in 2015, 2016. That uh, that peaked, and then oh, because I guess when Trump got elected, it, it just it it took a backseat real quick because people were focused on him, and then the trans thing just blew up, and so feminism just went out the window. It just disappeared, and even feminist frequency had to had to cancel itself. So it's like you're not the you don't they're still pandering to what they think is 2016 feminist energy, and it just does not exist anymore. Anyway, um, so it kills me that Disney has this amazing Star Wars brand and they use it to push this stupid, stupid propaganda. And sure, most people are not going to be as upfront about this kind of stuff as me. They just end up not watching it, so the numbers are pathetic. And it's going to be interesting to see what their next big screen movie does in terms of uh, you know, uh, box office. The next one might be the Daisy Ridley chick running around being a single chick on some adventure that nobody cares about. Modern Disney Star Wars is people who are not cool trying to be what they think is cool instead of just being authentic and organic. The writers are like 30 to 50. They don't really like Star Wars. They don't understand any of the themes of the hero's journey and the motives for their behavior. So they race and sex swap characters that only work because of who they are. You can't just... You can't just... People are connected with these thousands of deep-rooted connections to their blood tribes and the geography in which they came from and all these other cultural and biological markers that these roots connect to. It's like how, how language works. Words connect to all these reference. And you go, you can't just cut that, cut, cut all those connections out for you know, some blonde character and swap in a black character. It just destroys it. All the roots die instantly. And you have to wait to establish new roots. And in terms of storytelling, it's, it's you know, you get what you get. You get shows like this that it just doesn't make sense to anybody. Luke Skywalker, the dirt farmer, going on his big adventure. The audience is on board with it. He meets an older Han Solo, the lovable uh, rogue, and his uh, pet bear. And he's got Ben, the Jedi Knight, to guide him. They're all connected. They have these connections that the audience themselves understands because obviously they're using human actors to play these roles, and the audience can see that these human actors all look alike. They're all they all have this like subconscious connection. And when I say this, and what works, soy boys and cat ladies want to argue with me. That's perfectly fine. That it's um it's perfectly fine to race and sex swap the characters, except nobody wants to see the race swap because it's not organic. The audience can identify with the European people going on adventures because that's who they are. Other groups don't have that spirit of adventure. Is that politically incorrect? Ah, uh, maybe a little bit. It's the theme of the blonde person explaining uh, exploring the haunted forest because it feels authentic. But if you ask, uh, say, non-blonde people if they want to investigate the haunted forest, they look at you like you're crazy. Because it's it's not who they are. In fact, even other movies have made fun of that kind of parody of, you know, um, only crazy white people do that kind of stuff. But everyone knows that there is a core of truth to that kind of stuff. Like, who climbs the mountains? Who explores the poles? Who explores new lands? Who goes out to outer, outer spaces? Like, who does all that kind of stuff? It's like, who gets on a boat and sails across the Pacific or the Atlantic looking for little islands or going off on these bizarre, insanely, insanely dangerous adventures? It's Yeah, it's usually blonde people it's european people who are doing that kind of stuff so there is that core of truth and it's more than a core it's like that yeah that's actual truth and storytelling that's organic stories and when you swap that out it just immediately it kills the story because you're like yeah other groups just don't do that not to the extent it's like we all we all know this or even if it wasn't true it's like it it doesn't matter if it's true or not if it's what people feel is accurate that's the only thing that that matters Anyway, apparently Hollywood writers don't know this this human psychology. Uh, and the thing is, uh, most of America wants to see European actors, so they give us black and Asian ones instead. So nobody watches the shows, and the shows lose money, and they just keep doing it because Disney has a lot of money to lose. That's it. They're losing money to push this anti-family globalist propaganda because it's more important to them than money. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks to everyone who's been sending me uh, cool comics through the mail and uh, the pocket knives very useful and i'll see you guys all next episode